So we're going to uh, uh, continue with the teachings on Amitabha. And in the sadhana, we had uh, gone through refuge, the visualization at the beginning, refuge and bodhicitta, the four immeasurables, the seven them prayer, the seven them prayers for uh, accumulating merit and uh, purification and negativities. And then the step after that is the mandala offering. Okay, so the mandala offering is found in many, many practices. Uh, most practices, I would say, in the Tibetan tradition. And there's different kinds of mandala offering. Okay, there's the outer, the inner, the secret, and the suchness. So I think the uh, Amitabha has just the first two, the outer and inner, right? Does anybody, I don't have the sadhana here with me. But um, the outer mandala, that's the one that starts this ground anointed yeah, uh, that is offering the external environment and everything beautiful in it. And so the idea there being that we want to uh, cut our own attachment to all the sense objects around us, because we're usually so glued to sense objects, including people, you know, so this is really giving everything to the Buddha. And instead of just imagining, uh, you know, that we're giving this polluted, dirty place, we imagine it as a, as a pure land, okay? So that we're giving something that's really beautiful. Yeah, the sudden has both the, the outer and inner. Thank you. So... The uh, in the outer, you imagine, you know, everything in the world. Here, you know, you're visualizing it as the the structure of the universe, as seen in ancient Indian cosmology, a flat Earth, Mount Meru, four continents, and so on. So, uh, I have a friend, Rob Priest, and in one of his books, he rewrote the mandala for modern times. Uh, which he did in a very nice way, and maybe some we talked about it one time in the past, so we can also rewrite it to fit us too. But the idea here is, uh, you know, to have the feeling of generosity and relinquishment, and you're giving without a sense of loss. That's a really important part of it. You know, it's not like I'm giving the world, but I'm holding on to it. So here, doing this is very helpful because when we think that we're giving the world and everybody in it in a purified form to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, uh, then we no longer have ownership over any of it. Yeah? So that means that when we use tables and chairs and computers and vehicles and all the things that we use you know, every day. We don't have the sense of my computer, my vehicle, my clothes, my this, my that, because we've already offered everything to the three jewels. Okay? So very effective in our mind for breaking attachment to these things. It also makes us uh, recognize that then when we use the things around us, yeah, we are using things that we have offered to the three jewels that are the property of the three jewels. So we must treat them respectfully. Yeah, and so that makes us much more mindful not to break things. Yeah, or if we accidentally do, to repair them or to replace them ourselves, not just relying on whoever they belong to or the community or someone else to do that. Okay, so to really think, you know, these don't belong to me, and I'm using them due to other people's kindness. Yeah, so we're using our bowl, we're receiving food, we're using kitchen utensils, everything we have we've given to the Buddha Dharma Sangha. So we use it. It, it also makes us think, when I use these things, am I using them in accord with the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, the way the three jewels would want them used? 
Okay, so then, uh, you know, for people who handle money, it's like, am I spending my money in a virtuous way, you know, or am I buying intoxicants, or am I uh, wasting my time with what I do? Yeah, because the money is not mine. I've offered it in the mandala to the three jewels. Okay, so this is very effective for getting us to think. Yeah. So then we really have to check when when we're offering the mandala. Are we really offering it? Or I'm giving you Buddha, I'm giving you everything that I don't really want, but everything I want I'll keep for myself and that's not included in the mandala. Anyway, I don't believe in the flat world and Mount Meru mm -hmm. and the four continents, so that's easy for me to offer. And you know, all these goddesses, sure, you can have that. I don't believe in them. And you know, the spe the <laughs> special harvest and, and all these I don't believe you can have all those Buddha. But you know, my computer, my money, my car, my credit card, I'm keeping those. Because, you know, anyway, they're not so good to offer to you. Yeah. So we're very good at that, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Kind of our sneaky mind. So to really feel when we're offering the mandala, we're giving it. Yeah. And so that gives us some responsibility when we use things. Okay. Um. Also, what's very effective if, is if you're quite attached to somebody and you're having a lot of problems with attachment versus to somebody, whether it's a parent or a spouse or a child or a friend or boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, or some substance, some food that you're attached to or something, yeah, make sure you put that in the mandala. Yeah, when it says skies full of offering, you can have skies full of, you know, your favorite food and skies full of your relatives and your friends. Yeah, and uh, and you may be a little bit hesitant. You know, well, maybe should I? It's not really proper to offer somebody to the Buddha. That's like you know those old Jataka tales where. Uh, the Buddha in a previous life offered his spouse and children, and, you know, I don't think that's proper, so I shouldn't offer my spouse and children and anybody I'm attached to now, because that's like those old things, like I, these people are my property and they aren't. Don't think like that. Rather, think these are things I'm attached to, people I'm attached to, and aren't they much better off under the care of the Buddha than they are under the care of my grasping self selfish mind? Yeah. Think about that when you're really attached to somebody. Yeah. Or when you really want somebody to do things a certain way. Yeah. So offer it. Offer that person. And it's like, yeah, they really are. Uh, they're going to be much better off under the Buddha's guidance than with my grasping mind. Hmm. So it very this mandal offering is very helpful for breaking attachment to things. And so in that way, too, you can see why we accumulate so much uh, merit from offering the mandala. Hmm. So that's the outer mandala. The inner one is also in here. Okay, The objects of attachment, aversion, and ignorance, friends, enemies, and strangers, my body, wealth, and enjoyments, I offer these without any sense of loss. Please accept them with pleasure and inspire me and others to be free from the three poisonous attitudes. So this also emphasizes some of the things that we offered in the outer mandala in the first verse. Okay, but here, it and it's emphasizing some of the same things, but what's special in this verse here is that we're offering our body. Okay, and so our body is one of the things we are most attached to. We're with it from the time we're, you know, conceived till the time we die. And so much of our life is about pleasing this body and making it comfortable and making it good-looking and, you know, 
doing everything to make this body happy. We're really slaves to our body in many ways. So offering our body also to the three jewels in the inner offering. Okay, so outer offering, the first verse, outer refers to things in the environment that are not part of our mental continuum. Inner offering is referring to things that are part of our continuum, not our mental continuum. I should say the continuum of the self. Okay, so our body is something that the self, we commonly say, my body. So what's very nice about the inner mandala is that we imagine our body becoming the earth and the Mount Meru and the four continents and everything, and then offering our body in that form, yeah, as a Buddha land, being transformed into something very beautiful as a Buddha land, to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And so it's very effective for releasing attachment to our body. And releasing attachment to our body is so important because that's going to be possibly one of the big things that hangs us up at death time is we don't want to be attached to our body. Okay, friends and relatives, maybe I can give up, whatever. My possessions, I can give up. But my body, no. And especially if the body's painful, then so difficult at the time of death. And also difficult while we're living, isn't it, being attached to this body? So uh, there's a very nice visualization yeah, for this. So our skin becomes the golden ground. Yeah. Um, our torso is uh, Mount Meru. Yeah. Our two arms and two legs are the four continents. Yeah. The ring the seven rings of mountains around Mount Meru are our intestines. Okay? So these you know, you're taking all this stuff. Remember, you're transforming it into a pure land. You're not just offering the Buddha your gushy intestines, okay? Then all your inner organs, your spleen, your kidneys, your stomach, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, these all become uh, you know, many of the offerings in the sky. Your two ears are the, um, the parasol and the victory banner. Your two eyes are the sun and moon. Okay? So uh, your head is the jewel at the top of Mount Meru. So, uh, you know, you offer all your whole body yeah, so it's, it's very effective for your mind because you are imagining dismantling your body and making it into that universe and then that universe transforming into a pure land and you're offering that to the three jewels. So then, you know, your three jewels, I mean, I mean your, this body, you're transforming it so you're not seeing it in the same way. You've given it to the Buddha, so it's not yours. So don't fuss so much about it. Okay? Don't worry so much about it. Keep it clean. Keep it healthy. Don't, you know, go, get so frenetic when your little toe hurts. Um, relax. Yeah? Give up your body. Practice giving up your body. Because at death, we've got to give it up, whether we want to or not. Yeah? So... Uh, you know, this is very, I find this very effective um, for decreasing attachment to the body, especially if you're concerned about how you look when you get older, you know, you're seeing the wrinkles, the gray hair, the extra layers of flab, that also happens when you're younger, um, you know, then you, well, what do I look like, and, you know. So you just transform it and offer it. It's quite beautiful. Yeah? And you really do it sincerely. This no longer belongs to me. Okay. Now, another, so here we're offering the outer and inner mandalas in the context of, of the Amitabha sadhana. Another time when we offer the mandala 
is before Dharma teachings and offer after Dharma teachings. There we usually do the outer mandala and then we do another verse that is requesting the teachings or at, that's before the, the Dharma talk or after the Dharma talk of, uh, of requesting long life for the, uh, our spiritual mentors. Okay, so it's important when you do the mandala offering before and after teachings that your mind is thinking, you know, the Dharma is more precious than my body, than my friends and relatives, than all my possessions, because I'm offering all these things to the three jewels with the request, please teach me the Dharma. That's the mind we should have about how precious the Dharma teachings are. So when we offer the mandala, we shouldn't just be spaced out. This ground did with perfume, you know? And not thinking about what you're doing and not thinking about why you're doing it. Yeah, but really focused on um, offering these things. They don't belong to me. Why am I offering them? Because they're the most valuable things I have. Even if I look at them and they're kind of dirty and polluted and caused by karma and afflictions, I'm still offering them, transforming them into something beautiful, and I'm offering them because that is the value of receiving a Dharma teaching. One Dharma teaching is worth much more than possessing all these, my, my body possessions, friends and relatives. And then you have to think, why is hearing one Dharma teaching more important than all your worldly things? Why? Okay, so think about that. Yeah, if you don't understand why, then you really need to listen to more Dharma teachings so you understand why. Yeah? So really think, why are these things so important? Yeah? Why do I, I should I have the attitude of, you know, giving up my attachment to all my worldly things in order to receive even one Dharma teaching? or in order to say thank you after I've received a Dharma teaching. You know, it's really showing the value of what the Buddha taught us. I really enjoyed hearing about that, um, envisioning your body, transforming it. I hadn't, hadn't heard of that before, so I'm wondering what is the source? And then also one of my SAFE students, she says that she has a lot of anxiety about her health and mm -hmm. she wants to know what kind of practices she can do to let go of that concern. Yeah. And it sounds like, I, I'm going to tell her to watch this BBC, but are there any others? Yeah. Um, the usual, you know, visualizing, visualizing the Buddha and light from the Buddha coming in, you know, to relax the mind, to ease the anxiety, to feel like you're pure, you're filled up with the light from the Buddha, that would be a good technique, but also offering the body. And the source of this, it's usually taught in the teachings on Lama Chopa or Giorgio. Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami means I offer this uh, precious uh, universe to uh, the three jewels, to my guru and the three jewels. <laughs> 